presidents and prime ministers of African countries, how long do you want to stay in office? Because we have seen a trend that does not um, build up any person's morale. We've seen a trend that is so discouraging. African leaders, presidents, prime ministers, and name it, whatever office it is. When you find yourself in office, you just don't want to leave. You want to stay there. You want to die in office. What exactly do you have in those offices that make you want to die there? This is just a representation a system where you have to be in an office on behalf of your people. So why is it that you get there, you want to die there? You know, it's so discouraging. You will see some African uh, presidents or prime ministers who can barely walk, who cannot even lift up their hands to write anything. Their hands will be held for them to some print a ballot paper their hands have to be lifted up and held for them to even sign the signature because they are prime minister or president why must these things be going on and the people are just keeping quiet is there a uh, what do you call it, a spell did those leaders cast a spell on the people in fact, let me even forget about the people because the leader or so-called leader is supposed to know what is in the best interest of the people and do it. Because the people have shown so much trust, so much reliance, so much dependence and so much, you know, uh, uh, what do you call it? Submission to the leaders. It has gone to a point where the leaders have forgotten that they are the servants. Come on, President. Come on, Prime Minister. Serve your people. Just serve. Serve. That's what you come. That's what you've called. What you are called to do. Serve your people. You know why should you just stay in office and die there? It just is just unbelievable, and it's now it is now unbearable that somebody will be the president or prime minister of an African country and does not want to leave office year after year, uh, election season after election season, you still want to be voted in. If the constitution even says that you don't have any other, um, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, opportunity to, to, to run because you've exhausted your terms, you want to go and manipulate the constitution. Find people who will Take money from you and then begin to wangle your way back in, into the office what kind of is that back in the day the african system didn't have anything like ballot boxes communities sit down discuss the issues and identify who should go to represent them on that particular issue if it's about education the village will send somebody they trust in terms of education to go to the wider community meeting and talk about education because they trust that individual in education. And if there's a social matter that comes up, they will find someone else who will go to that meeting and the person will come back and report back to them. That is how governance was. But now you will just find somebody who can throw money around and you send him to uh, or whatever whether you send him or he sends himself go there to what they call ballot box and so people like in fact in africa people, these days people even get killed you see gun turning uh security agencies represented at the polling centers where they shoot guns elections ballot boxes politics people get killed why africa you are just not progressing at all when it comes to representation and leadership, individuals should be identified by the grassroots, at the grassroots, by the people in the local areas. They identify who, who will talk about health. But these days, when they bring out somebody, and of course the person has given them money and purchased their votes, the person will go there, 
when the issue of healthcare comes up, that is the person who talk about it. When education comes up, he is the person who talk about it. When marriage, social, tradition, culture, information, name it, whatever, environment, that is the person. How can that one person know everything? And that person will not come back to the community to say, give me people who know about the environment. Let's go and hold a meeting so that I will know what to say on the floor of the house about the environment. And that person will not come back to say, okay, now we're going to talk about education next week. I want to hold a meeting with our people, whoever is in education, please come teach us, headmasters, principals, and, and you know, education, you know, policy makers in the local areas, come, let's sit down and talk so that I will know what to present on the floor of the house. It does not happen. Because that one person who goes there, after spending money and paying you, he does not need your ideas. He doesn't need your talent. He doesn't need your time. He doesn't even need your involvement. He goes there and sits down. Whatever comes up, he'll sit down there. He may even be sleeping while the discussions are going on. Why do you want to die in office, African politician? Why? It's just, you know, it's, 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 it's unbelievable. Get out of office. Do your term and go home. Let someone else go there and let's see how we can move Africa forward. Not just to sit down there and be sleeping in the legislature, sleeping in the judiciary, sleeping in the executive, and just sleeping all the way. When you go out to even do something, you know, I, I, one thing that really baffled me was that a politician went to commission <laughs> an electric pole electric pole not even a transformer not even an energy or power grid an electric pole that one person in the community can go and buy and put there and at least contribute that to, 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 to the community a politician who is supposedly representing that area will go there and put an electric pole and call a ceremony tie a yellow ribbon or whatever ribbon around that electric pole. They will bring scissors on a platter, on a, on a what do you call it, on, 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 a, on a tray. They will bring it to him with a little girl, one year, two year old, bringing a bouquet of flowers. Come, when he comes in his SUV, flashy, or a truck, with his convoy, he's coming to commission an electric pole. I don't get it. And with a community like that or an electorate like that or or a, a, what do you call it subjects like that such an individual will be very happy he's he's having a ball he's having a blast he don't even get out of office because the people he is representing don't even know that they're being represented so nobody's representing them and so they do not care and how can that messenger know that he's a messenger he becomes a lord come on african leaders prime minister President of an African country, get out of office. You cannot stay in office for 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, and you cannot hand over the presidency or the uh, number one seat to your wife or to your son or your daughter or your son-in-law. You cannot. Well, you ask me what do I recommend? Yes, I have a recommendation. Call back all your politicians. Call them back. Let them go back to where they, wherever they came from. Call them back. It's called recall. Recall your politicians. And then let's know that when it is time for education, look at the village. Send somebody to the wider village. Somebody who is a principal or a teacher, a headmaster, something. You know, somebody who has distinguished himself in education. Send them to the wider village, when they go to the wider village, they will hold discussions there, they will hold debates there about what they can do to make education meaningful for the people. And when they do that, that meeting will reveal who has the best idea, or who is more vocal, or who is more knowledgeable. And just so, so that wider village will, uh, wider community will identify who will go to the next level. They will go there, until they find out who will be at the state level that's how to find a professional an expert in that particular area and meanwhile they are holding discussions about health health care in the village in the community they are discussing about health care 
environment, you know, all kinds of things that, that make life livable or worth living in the area. Find those people and let them go, not just to wait every four years. And the same Joe Blue comes around with bags of rice and all kinds of things and envelopes with 5,000, whatever currency it is. He will distribute it to the people and the amount there will not even be enough to pay for one day's meal. It will not. But the people have become so gullible that when they receive the envelope, they have sold their lives to the crafty politician. And what happens? They will be in total and abject poverty for four years. And after four years, the same person comes around to buy your vote again. Is that how you're going to live your life forever? And of course, that's what you want to hand over to your children. Just look at your plight right now. Look at that your child at home going up and down and going in and out. Look at that child. Is this what you're going to hand over to that your child? And I said to you, recall the politicians. They cannot stay in office for 40 years, 50 years, 60 years in office. What are they doing? And you are keeping quiet. And every four years they come and buy you. You are not for sale. You want to make the world a better place. Then you found it when you came into the world. Make the world better. And how to do it is locally. Begin locally. So when the different villages, I'm, I mean across Africa, I'm not talking to one country. I'm saying all the villages across Africa, go and call back your son or your daughter who has been out there uh, pretending to be uh, representing you and is not doing anything for you. And he shouldn't do something for you as an individual. He should do something for the community. Call him back if he's not doing anything. Because year after year, there is no new industry. No new school. Even the schools that are there, they are decaying and dilapidating and it's getting damaged and nothing's going on. The wind blows, the rain falls and there's a torrent, there's a storm and these things are going bad and there's no maintenance culture. But somebody is out there, so whatever that place is, somewhere, somewhere in Abidjan, in somewhere, you know, uh, 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 Dar es Salaam, in Abuja, in call it Douala, Lagos, Cairo. You be wondering why I mentioned Cairo. <laughs> yes, Cairo is in Egypt. Egypt is Africa. Egypt is a black country. All right? Egypt is a black country. So I mentioned Egypt. Cairo. They're everywhere. They're in Yaoundé. You know? They're everywhere representing you. Call them back if they have not been doing anything. And any of them who wants to stay too long in office, even if he's doing well, tell him that, come back. You have tried. Let us celebrate you. Someone else should go and build on what you have, uh, you know, laid out. That's the way it should be. We cannot continue this way. Let us go by local appointment and representation so that people will go there, people with the knowledge, people with the passion, people with the capacity and capability should go out there and talk about these needs and bring uh, bring results back home. Call back your politicians, Africa, Africans. Send all those politicians home, those ones who are not doing anything, those ones who want to die in office, those ones who are even sick and cannot even make a speech, those of them who cannot even come out and address the people in the stadium, those ones who cannot even come on TV and hold monthly press briefing send them home those ones who spend more days in the hospitals in foreign countries some go to belgium a hospital some go to germany hospitals some go to dubai hospital some go to britain england hospital you know some go to france for medical tourism because they are sick. Meanwhile, able-bodied young people who are also very much educated, who know current affairs, who know the need 
of their people. They are languishing in what I call it languishing in poverty. They're languishing in need. And if they talk, they get killed. And so why should you all be keeping quiet? I, I, am I supposed to say you all? Why should we be keeping quiet? I'm included. Why are we keeping quiet? Let us recall all our politicians who are not doing anything for us. Let's call them back. So they will stay in office forever. Hand over the government to their sons, their daughters, and their sons-in-law, and, and just perpetuate themselves in authority, and uh, no, no progress is being made. No new industry, no new school, no new hospital, no nothing going on, no motivation, no empowerment programs, nothing, no training for anybody. No, we cannot take that anymore. Recall those politicians who are not doing anything. That's where we are right now.